Hello and welcome to coverage of the TCG Player Max Point Invitational. We're in Las Vegas, I'm Marshall Sutcliffe with Frank Lepore, and we are just underway in round two here, where we have Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa, the Hall of Famer from Brazil, playing Esper Dragons. He's playing against Brandon Nelson, Nelson who's on Red Green Devotion. The old Bioblight on, on the uh, Rattleclaw Mystic. No ramping will be will be had today. As long as as long as Paolo has his has his way. Looks like uh, Course of Crucifix does resolve, which is pretty sweet because now it actually lets gives gives Brandon a, a little bit of card advantage against the Esper deck. And if Paolo does not have a hero's downfall for it, then it's probably gonna stick around for a bit. Got a temple on top, and that's a freebie. Brandon won GP Salt Lake City last year. Wow, that was just last year. Yeah, Jeez. 2014, man. So we have a Grand Prix champion versus Hall of Famer. Um, these matches are going to be ridiculous. I, they can't, they're only going to get better the higher we get, right? Like, yeah, I think Brandon also has another GP Finals as well uh, on his resume back in GP Minneapolis. That's pretty good. Grand Prix Finals and a Grand Prix Top 8. Yeah. Or Grand Prix win, rather. Win, yeah. <laughs> So not a lot of action here. Um, Paolo with two an Urborg and two Havens. That's interesting. A land yeah, he's got most of his mana though. He doesn't actually have double blue yet. He doesn't have any double blue cards. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he does either. Except for the last card, I think. But I think it's I think he's pretty well set up, especially with the Urborg. I think I say Altung Invocation, which he's held off on playing. He might he's I think he's thinking about it right now. Like, how much damage am I really going to take from this thing before I just kill it? Yeah, he's just going to foul second invocation, that thing. Gain four. I, too, can gain life. <laughs> <laughs> and both at 22. And there's Pelucranos as the follow-up play here for Brandon Nelson. Yeah, so the pressure keeps mounting here mounting. on Paulo, yeah, though. This is what we're talking about with the, uh, the red-green devotion list. Like, every card needs to be answered. And Brandon has no incentive to play more than one threat now, like when they're this big. Like That's true. I'll put you on four turn clock. If you can deal with this guy, I'll put you on another one. So, I mean, Paolo has a he has ways to deal with him definitely, but like the you can definitely feel the pressure if you're in uh if you're in Paolo's situation, I imagine. Yeah, this is an interesting spot here for him. He he doesn't have his double blue available for the Salimgar scoring in his hand currently. But he does have a Dragon Lord Selimgar at the ready that he can fire off next turn if that land or if that card that he kept on top of his library with the scry was an untapped land. Starting to look like a crux of fate would be a welcome addition to Paulo's hand. Oh agreed, especially with this uh, Genesis Hider for four. Right. The Hydra hitting a Courser of Crew Fix, and there's another one. These are <laughs> all like problems for Paulo, yeah. <laughs> These are all issues for him, too. The I mean, Coursers really can grind out a lot of advantage. Yeah, Brandon's never in a position where he's like, well, I, I don't want a Courser now. Like, you always want one because it's just going to get you free lands a lot of the time. Let's see what that wha what that card on top was. It was a land, but it's a dismal backwater. He knew he needed to hit this land drop, but he can't actually play That's his Dragon Lord Silumgar. He can fire off Ojutai here, though, so he does Next that. Next time he can Silumgar. Yeah, he can sell him next turn and really sort of shore up this board state if Brandon doesn't have a way to get rid of it. Feels like he's going to want to be blind. You want to take nice. 11 and go to 7 here? Don't know how I mean, bad that option, is. But it doesn't feel good, you know? Like, I mean, even if it's the right play, it doesn't feel great. Crux of Fate would be amazing here. You just name non dragons, and then you get to attack for free with the Ojutai. Like it's just, it's all. It, it, that's just all. That inside. would probably be all she wrote if if that was the case. He doesn't have it in his hand. He'd, he'd need to top deck it or hit it off of Ojutai. Yeah, which is which possible. Is, yeah, it's very possible actually. Yeah, but his backup cards. plan of just Plus playing Dragon Lord Silumgar is not bad here either. Oh yeah, steal Pelucranos. Yeah. Seems 
See, my my question is, if he does try to steal your your Pelucranos with the Dragon Lord Solemngar, do you just shoot the Solemngar in response so they fight? I mean, the Death Touch would kill the Pelucranos, and the Solemngar would live, but he he wouldn't have your Pelucranos. It's the uh, the benefit to that, I would think. So he gets in there with with nine. It's like I'm only attacking with the guys you can't block, profitably anyway. Yeah, these are fine trades for Brandon Nelson. I think Paulo's just going to take it. Yeah, nine is. Yeah, nine is. I mean, going to nine he, is not he great. Could but he has cards like Foul Tongue Invocation. Well, yeah, and this also gets somewhat interesting because he has two Haven of the Spirit Dragon as well. So, if he wanted to start grinding, he could conceivably start cashing in. Ojatize for threats, and then with the plan of bringing those back repeatedly. Um, I think that Elfish Mystic was an interesting play there. I guess he's just going to rumble with it. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like, well, I mean, just committing a random 1-1 one -one to the board, you know? When, like, the only thing that kills you right now, I think, is pretty much like a, a sweeper. So Paul is all the way down to nine life here, but he's got that Dragon Lord Silumgar in hand. He's deciding if he wants to attack with Ojitai. This is a big turn. Like this is this yes. is gonna decide a lot of things. This is, and it looks like he can attack here, play Silumgar, steal. Let's see, how much mana so what he's doing right now is he's counting how much mana he has to see if he can monstrous Pelucranos and kill Dragon Lord Ojitai here. He can steal it ahead of time. So he activates Nykthos. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he has 10 mana. I don't think he has enough to, to do it this turn. You know, no. just take it. See, so, you know, like I said, if Brandon doesn't have an answer to Selimgar, he can just actually do it for one, have them fight, and then Selimgar would kill Pelucranos. So it's just a way for him not to get it. Doing some math, I think. It, mm, yeah, the elf. You just break even on devotion mana. You you add one, but he adds one more devotion. So it's it's not even like a, a law. A, it's not. It's a it's a wash in, as term in terms of what Nykthos makes. But I think he only makes ten. Like if he makes eleven, if he can make it eleven mana, he's in much better shape because then he just trades with Silumgar. But because he can only make ten, it I don't think it's gonna do it. Yeah. That's rough. He's going to let that happen, and Dragon Lord Rojitai is going to hit the red zone. Now, this is a big anticipate here, and he finds nothing. He thought he's in a couple of lands, so Do you even take maybe the thought he's is good. I, I mean, he can. It feels like you're in a much it's better gonna position. It's going to put him at Paolo. six. It, it, it would put him at six. His life total is becoming quite low six here. Even seven. Oh, well, well he's got a delta. Okay, so yeah, he's yeah. got to crack it to get the swamp. Right, crack it. Oh no, he just plays, he just uses Urborg. He just plays it off black. Yeah, sure. Okay, so he goes to seven. But, which which actually matters here because, you know, if Brandon has another big threat, he can attack with everything. Silumgar eats the Genesis Hydra, but he would take three in that transaction. Four. But if he's playing, yeah, if he's lost, he's just taking the big threat, hopefully. Yeah, that's Hopefully's the idea, and it's Genesis another Genesis Hydra. Actually, Hydra. it's probably much better than him having a second Genesis Hydra. Yeah, absolutely, especially because Paulo just doesn't have anything to do. All right, so this looks pretty good for Paulo at this point, now I Brandon think. Doesn't, now Brandon's the one without anything to do. Hoop. Oh, another one on top of the library, but... That's old Jenny. His, uh, his best case here is just to play another He's got wooden foothills, and he's like, well, I'm not cracking that, I guess. This is just a lot of pressure from Paolo's side, yeah, though. Yeah, this is just a lot of heat. I feel like you just, yeah, you just play other Courser and then play land, right? Game two. I mean, incremental life is incremental life, so... Brandon seems to agree. Yep. There we go. 20 for Brandon Nelson. But currently with no way to deal with Dragon Lord Ojitai. Yeah, that's going to prove problematic, especially when uh, Paolo's looking at four cards a turn. Three from Ojitai and one from the draw step. I think he just drew a Solomgar Scorn, which is pretty good. Uh, he actually drew the... Um, Was it Trial Song Invocation? Invocation, yeah. yeah okay. He's had the Scorn for a while now. Interesting. Yeah. He's doing well. 
Yeah, he's in a good spot now. He's got he's effectively a, a hard counter for the next thing that Brandon does, which is why taking the Genesis Hydra is so important he's and why it's so... Turning the corner. Yeah, it's not great for Apollo that there's another Genesis Hydra because you can't just Solemgar score on that. It's not a single threat. But usually, I mean, you can... It's it's nice that you can definitely choose which one you're going to counter, you know? Okay, well, well, I think you can only counter the Hydra, right? Oh, because you're... Yeah, are you ca you're not casting the... Uh, yeah, I, I think, think you're just putting it into play. Double-check that one real quick, but... But e either way, I think that they both become must-counter threats. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I agree. Because it's going to be a seven massive line. Genesis I mean, Hydra. Even with enough Corsair of crew fix, like, they're they're pretty threatening. Yeah. Yeah, you just put it into play. So yeah, that's so sweet. you can't counter that, but... Still, the Genesis Hydra as a 12-12 or whatever it ends up being on this board is still an issue. Like, it really is. Some of their scorn and anticipate in this, in this group. Might just take the anticipate and just keep looking for, like, a Crux of Fate? Because Crux of Fate just puts you so far ahead right now. Yeah, Crux puts this one about done. So Brennan's 15. Got 8 power on board. So he's on a 2-turn clock, not including Corsair Life. So probably uh, more closer to a three-turn clock. Just three turns is a lot, though. Especially when you're at seven. Yeah, and, and he's got Corsair Crewfix out, so he gets to turn through the top of his library. Yeah, so that's also not going to be drawing like lands. You're going to draw much, much more relevant cards, theoretically. Definitely have some has some decisions to make here. He's always he took the anticipate, so he's definitely just holding on to it. Um, the other thing is Falcon Invocation in hand is is great for the four life, but it's just gonna probably kill that Elvish Mystic, which is not what you want out of out of a Falcon Invocation. This looks like it's gonna be Bile Blight. Mm -hmm. You just kill the Mystic probably, and then it's have and then Falcon Invocation's a little better. Yeah, that's just because otherwise Bile Blight doesn't kill any of the other guys. And gain four. Yep, that's exactly what we thought. Yep, there's invocation, so that's going to take out a relevant card here. And let me let me tell you how not scary a four four is when you have a Pelucranos and a Silmgar on your side of the board. Yeah, and Brandon's got to consider whether the Corsair and the life gain is more relevant. Yep, and it, he he thinks that it is. The four power is not doing much right now, especially when it can't buy any of the five toughness creatures of Paolo. Yeah, so Paul is really putting the crimp on this, and you can see that Brandon Nelson has found probably the most depressing card he can on top of his library, which is why he's shuffling it away here. Still in carry add. It's not going to do anything, so Foothills is going to find him some fresh action here. Melissa and I have this running joke where whenever you play a Corsair for the first time, the top card is always a Sylvan carry added. <laughs> it never fails. Yeah. It's like it's like when you get a new car, and you then you start noticing that car on the road. You're like, it's, I see this car everywhere. Everyone has this car. <laughs> it's it, there's a thing it's as a name for that it's, I can't think of what it's called but it's oh there you're, is you're probably like yeah because it's like when you're looking <laughs> see that's exactly it right that's there that's brutal well, confirmation bias thank you Josh and uh, yeah that's yeah so like see there's another that's that's hilarious that could not have been planned any better all right well there's that Genesis Hydra though that Brandon drew he's gonna fire this thing off for five plus three that's so that's eight and. He can find anything in his deck, even well, we know he's guaranteed Dragon Lord. A or or uh, someone carry at it if he wants to. Yeah, he had that one in the bank. Well, Ooh. he's found a Whisperwood Elemental. That's probably the best option here, I imagine. Yeah. No Dragon Lord of Tarka's there. The other option would be a Xenagos or a Den Protector. Dragon Lord of Tarka would be insane. Because yeah, you just problem with Den Protector is that it's face up. Yes, that's I. And that's what I don't like about it because like it doesn't interact with the Collected Company because of that. Mm. It doesn't act. It doesn't act, uh, interact well with Genesis Hydra because of that. Yeah. Yep, Whisper Elemental. That's what I would have... Oh, it's, I hope Pella doesn't try to counter the Whisper Elemental. What? No, he'll he'll just yeah, counter okay. the Hydra. But he knows that an 8-8 is a it's still totally a, yeah, relevant it's definitely, factor it's here. It's definitely yeah. a thing. Because he does need to close this game out. Countered the Genesis high. What did he not? What happened to the? Oh no, he did he take it back? He takes his maxis. Okay, now we countered it. There we go. Okay. I think that's three. Gen
Genesis Hiders in Brandon Nelson's graveyard right now. That's a good amount to have drawn as your as as the green red devotion deck. Yeah, he hasn't been able to leverage a massive advantage. <laughs> That's a uh, Rashad Miller Magritte uh, manifest token there. Yeah, Rashad's made you know old school fans of GG's live will remember his. Uh, his original run of tokens where he's like eating hats. I had one in my backpack just recently. There yeah, you go. I well, took one out when I you was know what? He made a new run of tokens. I know. I'm gonna have to collect each of these now. Yeah. They're like Pokemon to me now. These are. Uh, th that's one of them. That's the manifest token. But he's got, I don't know, twelve or fifteen or if something. There's a million in front of us, yeah. us right now. I, I can't even count the number. There's some some really obscure creatures here, like a bird. He's he's giving me a look like I didn't know what Wingmate Rock made. I knew. He just covered all his bases though. Swan Song. Yeah, Swan Song does make a bird. Those are two different birds though. Truth. One's a blue bird. <laughs> bird humor. That Palooka knows it's just just sitting there, just hanging out. I will just hold down the fort for you, buddy. Yeah, he's been on good. Good blocking duty. Slumbra's a dude. That's a guy who takes things. Yeah, the <laughs> that guy takes what he wants. He does. Yeah, Paulo's at 11, so he's got to make sure he keeps the shields up here. Urborg is such a useful land. Like every time I build, every time I see or build a black deck, I'm just if there's not one Urborg in it, it's just I'm like, why isn't there an Urborg in this? It's just such a useful land. Like it turns your Haven of the Spirit Dragons into swamps. It turns your Ooh. your fetch lands into swamps. Whoa! That's a dude. Speaking so, of Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Yeah, no kidding. So Ugin pops down here, and it's gonna minus something. It looks like looks three. Like, yeah, it looks like three. Which gets rid of both of the coursers, but does leave the manifest and the Whisperwood behind. I don't know if that's gonna do it though. Hell's got a lot of a lot of defense here. Yeah, he also can just attack twice in the air. Yeah. And Brandon's kill Brandon from this position. And Brandon's life sources are uh, out of commission now. I love watching Paulo down. play, man. He's very meticulous. He's so good. I hear he's uh got a few got a few top eights under his belt. Yeah, nine of Someone them at the pro that. tour level. I, yeah, the guy's just unreal. Also a Hall of Famer, for obvious reasons. So if you're Brandon Nelson, like, I feel like you might just go to game two here. He's going to play a presumed Den Protector here. He's like, no, no, it is a morph. Does Rashad not have morph tokens? Just manifest? You know, that's a good question. That's weird. I don't see any morph tokens in front of us, so I think he just made manifest, which uh, is real awkward. This is a grave oversight. What a what a misplay on Rashad Miller's part. All right, what do we got here for? Uh, <laughs> I like that Pella has so many ways to look at the top three cards of his library. Yeah, he's anticipating theme deck here. <laughs> yes, I just play cards and we look at the top three cards. So are these both manifest creatures on the board? Because this... Yeah, the other one's a morph. Okay. The mana the two manifests came from Whisperwood. And now he's... Yep, now he's getting in there with the Pelucranos as well. Now is the time. Do you just, I feel like you just get in there with a Sylvanar instead. Like, I would just triple block the Pelucranos, right? Yeah, he's going to offer it up. That's interesting. Or at least with Sylvanar, you're getting in the damage. You get an 8 damage, then you have a turn, 2 turn clock, you know? So, I'm, I'm curious, uh... 
It's 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 actually still a two turn clock though because of Ugin. That's true. He's got lightning bolts. Yeah, he can just start firing those off. So he gets in for five with Dragon Lord. He gets to draw, or he gets to draw an extra card here, and then he can fire off Ugin. And he didn't want to tra he didn't want to trade with the uh, the Blucherness. He just he was just satisfied just throwing a guy in the way. Yeah, he just jumped. Yep, that's what we thought it was. And there's Genesis Hydra coming back to hand now. Paulo's continuing to keep the board locked down. Oh. Jeez. Paulo's so good at this game. It yeah, is just that was, stupid. That was pretty good. He set that whole thing up. Yep. That was rough. He seems like such a nice guy when you meet him, I too. Know, and, and then, then he, he just, does that. And then he just does the, he throws you under the bus like that. Unbelievable. He's like the guy that would trip you when the cheetah chases you. And this is... Brandon Nelson, you're in, the, you're in top deck mode. Uh, you get one draw step out. here, Chief. What was that? Was it another Hydra, was it? Haven't we seen all four by now? I think we've seen three. If that was another Hydra, I'd be very impressed. The Hydra skill is strong with this one. Pelucranos is what he drew. How much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, one. That's exciting. Two. We can make four with... Yep, yeah, that is a Pelucranos. So now we can make, we have four devotion, so one, two, four, five. so we can make six, six mana. mana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which doesn't actually do anything. No. So I think, I think Brandon is dead. He's dead. He's dead. Heroes downfall, you're a whisper what up, my soul. Just for good measure. Sack it in response, I presume. And that's the, yeah, the writing was on the wall there. All right, so Paula Vitor Domino Rosa, in impressive fashion, whittles away the defenses of Brandon Nelson and finds himself the victory with his Esper Dragon stack that he's had some pretty serious success he's with. Had some, he's had some luck with that list, I'll tell you that. Definitely doing well for himself there. See Eric Froelich and Chris Finnell in the background there. Have an undoubtedly a friendly chat. You are not. There's a Caleb Durward walking by with his with his burly beard. This is und like you were you were not a uh, not incorrect with your murderers row. But if you want some friendlier competition, head on over to the Standard State Championships on October 17th and 18th. So uh, you can head out there, play some standard, be crowned the uh, champion of your own state, and get qualified for things like the TCG Player Max Point Championship. So get out there, play some standard, and claim the title. Can you get Can you get queued for this through the states? I believe if you win. I think if you win, you get queued. I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah. That's a nice bonus. Yeah, I mean, like even if you're just champ, they're both fifty thousand dollar events. So even if you're just qualified for the championship, it's still pretty sweet. Yeah, I can't decide which one I'd rather play in. The other I mean, one was bigger, but had a less intense field than this one does. This, this, this field is very intense. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, look at our feature match rate. It's ridiculous. It's By the way, I just saw a handshake. And oh, interesting. Is, are they done on the back table? Yeah, already? I believe they are. I, I think Efro may have won. Waste no time. Finale won? Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Efro wearing his uh, trademark Garfield shirt. The original Grumpy Cat. I do tend to agree with the sentiment of that T-shirt. <laughs> it is an early morning for a vi for a Vegas morning. Oh, there's a Jesse Hampton back there too. Man, everybody's here. It's real deep. I think the uh, I think there's like 96 players. Like I think there's 95 pros and one regular guy who showed up. <laughs> the poor guy. That's he's like, oh, what happened? I haven't seen him in the feature match area yet. Yep, the first place for the state championships is an invite to the $50,000 Invitational. 
You also get 50 max points, and max points are uh, the way you get into the uh, the 50,000 art championship. Of course. So you know, if you have 20 max points, you are you you, you exchange them for an entry into the championship. So basically, if you have ways to get max points, you can get in there. So if you don't win an event, like if you don't win a gold or if you don't win a silver, you can just play in a bunch and accumulate max points, and then you'll still qualify eventually. So it's a point system. Whereas the Invitational, you have to actually win an event or uh, top eight, like a diamond event, for example. So multiple ways to qualify, multiple events to qualify too, and like the the it's definitely just money to be won, you know, fifty thousand dollars is no joke. Man, green creatures in standard. Back in my day, we had Force of Nature. Yep. That guy was the an eight eight for six, and that was a good deal. You had to pay the upkeep every turn. Yeah, Paulo's having none of it, though. He is not convinced He's that like, the green nah, creatures are the way those. to go. You got creatures? Me too. I'll take them. And then he does. Oh, the last minute sideboard decision. He's like, eh, I'm going to change something here. He was mid-shuffle. Yeah, Fennel in the background standing up, looking to put a little, looking to put a run together here. Yeah, I mean, he's, I imagine he's two zero since he's on the back table and he just won his match. So yeah, for sure. That is the uh, the number you want to be at right now. Unless you're Brandon and Paolo, in which case that would be weird because then you have two wins and you're sitting down playing your second round. Yeah, I guess they could be playing a fun fun game or whatever. But uh, the old the old fun and in. Yeah. Getting our, getting our open hands here. Brandon with the Pokemon deck box. I bet saw there's a Blast Toys in there. Saw Jason Chung in the background there, too. Jason, uh... Ah, the old Swamp into Thoughtseize. A classic. Usually, uh... Swampsies? A, a basic land on turn one is not that common. No, it's definitely not. Not in this deck. Alright. I think you just take the... Rattleclaw Mystic? Like... Maybe the Corsair. I feel like you can deal with the Atarka and the, the Genesis Hydra at a later date. Like, one seven mana. Genesis Hydra's not relevant with the with the cards he has in hand. Hydra is the biggest problem long term, though. Yeah, definitely. Alright, so he's going to yeah, cut off his mana in the early stages here. I agree with that. Corsair was another option. Because we know the, the damage. But uh, unlike Rattleclaw Mystic, Corsair comes down at a, at a time where Paolo can potentially counter it. But the, the Swamp for Paolo is not promising. Alright, so we're halfway to Silumgar Scorn mana now. I see a Caves of Aquilas, but I don't see a second... Oh, there's a Temple of Deceit. There is, but he decided not to play yeah, it here I, so he can fire off that Anticipate yeah, or... Makes sense. I mean, yeah, just the Anticipate. His other card is Disdainful Stroke, but there's nothing coming down in that range on this turn. And having the disable stroke makes sense why you wouldn't you just leave a Tarka where he is. That guy's that guy's not gonna resolve most likely. Look at that little guy. In response, I'll anticipate. They're playing a little quickly too, so they might be. I don't know how much time is left in the round, but they want to make sure they don't draw here. That game did go long. Yeah, that game was. It took a while for Paula to kind of turn the corner and close it out. And Brandon wasn't giving up, so he was just he was just holding on, which is right of him to do. Yeah. Let him win, make him win. Looks like uh. The Anticipates and the Ojutais kind of act like Sensei's Divining Top in this matchup, where they just take a lot, a long time to resolve because you have to process all these cards. You're like, which is the best one of these three? And then you do it again, and you're like, well, what about these three? What do I have in hand? And it's just a lot of thinking. Like, there's a lot of decisions to be made with the Esper deck. Whereas Brendan is usually like, I have five mana, I got a five drop. Let's play that. Alright, so Paul is going to play a Temple of Deceit and pass a turn back here, and uh, things are moving nicely for Brandon Nelson, who finds a land on top to the, Nykthos. The, the second copy is slightly awkward. Yeah. Whenever you have the Nykthos in play, the, the Nykthos on top is very awkward. But you probably still just want to go for it, right? Like, get that card off of the... Like, what... Is, is it much better in his hand? 
get to use it twice. I, yeah, I never. I would never want to draw it. You know, like. Yeah, he he is though. He's fine with drawing. Yeah, he's it. he's like, well, that's gonna happen. So. Brandon just with with not a lot of pressure early. That's I mean that's the devotion deck I guess. Like you, you uh your curve starts your your threatening curve starts at around four with like Xenagos. Whoa. Lucranos. Speaking of threats, my God, look at that what? hand. There's Whisperwood <laughs> Elemental, Dragonlord Atarka, and Genesis Hydra. Like that is nasty. There's probably a right choice here, but I don't think there's any wrong choice. Yeah, I mean I'm assuming it's the Hydra because that's a guaranteed two for one. Yes. Effectively, Whisperwood uh, Elemental is too. If he if he can't kill it within the window that it's yeah, playing. it's just I think he's I think he's willing to take that. Yeah, especially because he has Hero's Downfall. On yeah, because so he has because he actually can kill it. Yeah, right, exactly. And uh, he's also got uh, Disdainful Stroke, so he can counter either of the two big threats. But the Hydra, he can't. And if you if you were unable to if he didn't have the Sacrifice Clause, Whisperwood. Being able to just steal it with Silumgar is just huge. Jeez, more action for Brandon Nelson. Good. We might see him just combo off here, too. You know, one of the reasons he may have kept that Nykthos on top before was so he could activate it, play it, play another one, activate it, and generate a bunch of mana for a big Genesis Hydra. The plan is still alive now that he's got another one on top of his library. Genesis Hydra's like the, uh, the modern age Blood Braid Elf. Yeah. Just a little more expensive, no haste. But you can Way get, bigger. You can get seven drops off of it, yeah. so I guess there's upsides and downsides. Yeah, and it can just be a 7-7 seven, seven or an 8-8 right, exactly. or whatever, and it hits really hard. And you can't counter the spell that they get. There's a lot of benefits to it that that def that uh, make it a little more distinct than, than Bloodbraid Elf. And you can see the respect that Paulo gives it as well. Oh, yes. I mean, you have to, right? Like, otherwise it just kills you. It's, yep. a, it's a very good creature. All right, so here's Whisperwood. I think is that that's one of that's been one of the most played creatures of, you know the uh, the set that was there was like this the cycle of cards that were designed by game designers right from M15, mm -hmm. and Genesis Hydra was one of them. Oh, it was. Yeah, I think it says it right on the bottom. Oh, I didn't know Genesis Hydra was part of that Check list. It. I don't. You're gonna you're gonna make me make me wrong a bit. Oh uh, yeah, I mean if you get a chance, and, uh, we're gonna find out. I'm not super worried about it, but I I did not realize it was in that subset. I think you can see the little text on there, too. I'm checking right now. Yeah, it says designed by George Fan, it looks like. So, George... George Fan? Yep, I was just going to... I think you're on it. We're going to see who, uh, what George Fan has to his credit. But, yeah, I mean, like, it's. I think it's the... I think it sees... Oh, oh George, George Fan. George yeah, Fan yeah. is a Plants vs. Yeah, Zombies he's, guy. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's probably one of the... That cycle of cards, the uh, game designer designed cards that sees the most play. You know, there's like uh, there's other cards like aggressive mining. Um, yes, hot soup was one. There's a bunch of the, the cards are all very flavorful and they're all they're all sweet in their Oof. own ways. That was a nice hit yeah, for Brandon that's there. Good. Wow, he fires off Genesis Hider while the shields are down for four, and he hits Xenagos the Reveler. So the thing about that is like that was about as good as it gets on Xenagos four. When Xenagos is in play. Genesis Hider's still in the stack, so theoretically, Paolo does have a chance to hero his downfall to Xenagos before Brandon gets to use it, but that is not going to be the case here. There is that window, though. That's a <laughs> Look at the Seder that's token. That's a Rashad Seder token. Yeah. I think Rashad's going to do, like, maybe a little Kickstarter for these tokens or that's something a good idea. coming up soon. I yeah. can see that. Yeah, he showed me a bunch of them um, on his computer, and they're pretty cool. And now they're in real life. He also may or may not have made me take a picture for one of these. I I I gonna go with May. Yeah. You should. Uh, we should. But get there's the power a reasonable chance that it doesn't happen. All right. Listen, so. Listen, Brandon. That is a manifest token. Yeah, Brandon has completely turned the corner a here. A token. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, it looks like Brandon's gonna be able to close this thing out too. Yeah, I mean, once you get like Xenagos is hard to deal with by itself, but when it's also created two two twos with haste, eh, it's pretty good. Oh, Pal's at one. Oh, we see him, Rashad. He, now, now Rashad r rumbles over here to point He's out that his tokens are on tokens. camera that we just told the audience about. We had a, a, a huge rant He's about in party mode. Ago. On the tokens or in real life? Uh, on the tokens. And in real life. He's in Seder, oh, party Seder mode. Yeah, that's it. Game three. Yeah, Brendan Nelson, really nice hit there off of that Genesis Hydra hitting Xenagos, see, and funny, uh, that this was is, it. This is another uh, instance of where like the player who went first had a bigger advantage than the it feels like you just pull ahead. Like you're, this is a format where it's much more, you're much more proactive when you're on the play. I mean, it, 
Uh, obviously, that that makes sense in and of itself, but like, it it's more pronounced in this format. It feels like because you have to you have to respond to everything in this format. Like, if I play Whisperwood, you have to deal with it. If you play a Dragon Lord Ojitai, I have to deal with it. And quickly. And quickly, right. You have one turn. So as soon as I play that, your job is to respond to it. So the first person to play one of these big threats usually pulls ahead. I mean, there's a lot of times where, you know, you get to a point where, like, in the game, you, you're, you're back and forth. But there's also points where, like, you know. But if you are uh, having an, if you have an excess of Dragon Lord Ojitai that you're trying to get rid of, you can sell them on TCGplayer.com. And uh, it's open to the public. You don't have to have a store. You just go in there, list your cards, and start selling. And uh, you're selling to one of the largest contingents of Magic players in the world. So uh, get on there, sell your cards, and uh, no no fees. List them for free. Looks like uh, Game Store there has a little pricey discrepancy. Well, there's yeah, there's two Game Stores too, and I don't know why yeah, they're, game, they're competing game with game each other. Game Store's five cents off on That's, the same exact card. That seems like it's a bad business model. Yeah. But, you know. I, I'd still buy from Game Store. I think they have a good reputation. I've played a Game Store before, so. <laughs> All right, so we get an exciting Game Three conclusion between these two gentlemen as they uh, work their way up the standings. Both players won their first round. Jason Chung from Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I saw him earlier too, actually. He just recently top aided uh, Pro Tour Dragons of Tark here as well. God, you know what? I think he's actually from New Zealand. New Zealand, yes, yeah. that's correct. You're correct. I uh, I was getting my southern that hemisphere. Is, that is not the one you want to screw up. That is that is very correct, yeah. actually. Yeah. Now I feel bad. Though I think he, I mean, he knows all the Australian players. You know, like you know, you know Riley, who does coverage for Wizards over in uh, Europe. He's he's from Australia as well, and and so I've got to know, know a bunch Ray. of the guys. Yeah, Ray. Yeah. Oh, Corsair? No, Den Protector, I assume. We we don't speak Ray's name. Rattleclaw, Mr. Okay. We <laughs> no, Ray is not to be... No, I tease. I, I love Ray. <laughs> He's a good guy. We're, of course, talking about Ray Walk and Oh, Shaw. he said no. I now, Paulo's been pretty consistent about keeping uh, Brandon off of mana, and you can see why he is missing a land here, it looks like. This format is such a format where, like, you play the cards on your curve, so it's like... A lot of times, Solengar Scorn as a Force Spike is just valuable. You're just like, well, you can't pay the one. You counter your Siege Rhino. Yeah. I didn't even have a Dragon, sucker. Though, in this case, Polo has too many of them. Yeah, and it's also... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was going to say, it's like a format where, like, a lot of times it's so assumed that you have a Dragon anyway that people don't even play around the one-mana clause. Yeah, this, that was a big draw there from Polo because he does have a Dissolve in his hand. And I think he'll fire it off on effectively anything that Brandon commits to the board here. He wants that scry. No black and he, mana. Could yeah, he could hurt him in the long run. Oh, though. it could hurt him. Well, maybe I was wrong. I'm not going to counter that yeah. yeah. All right, well, there's the black mana. Right, so we're getting somewhere. This is actually starting to, to creep back in Paulo's direction here. Even though he's under a bit of pressure, oh, and even though Brandon's kind of going off with that Courser of Crew fix, things are starting to look a little better. I think we shuffle that away. Yeah, I don't think yeah. we want that right now. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, get rid of that. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So, one, two, so four. So he has access to about nine mana this turn. That's a lot of mana. Wow. Nykthos makes three, or four. Uh, then he's got the Wooder Fiddles for five. No, seven. He's got seven mana this turn. My mistake. Not bad. It's still pretty good, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, that still lets him hit, like, Whisperwood Elemental <laughs> off of uh I'm sorry, not nine on Hydra. turn four. Only seven. Yeah. My mistake. Yeah. And yeah, that's one from Nykthos, one from Elvish, and one from so and carry added. Gains another life, too. Not irrelevant. Like, especially because the, the Esper Dragons deck, a lot of times it has a five mana clock, a five uh, damage clock from Ojutai, so if you're above that, y you get it, uh, you get a turn, which is relevant. That is much better than Rattleclaw Mystic. Whew. That's Brandon Nelson is firing on all cylinders here. Paulo has a handful of action, all spells in hand. Some he can't cast. Like he's, got the, he's got the hero's downfall. He's got two Ojutais, it looks like. Yeah, he's he's an Urborg away from glory. Oh, and Urborg there's killer. Whisperwood, which is going to get snapped, dissolved. And what does he find on top? Well, it's probably a land, because he put it right back up. If you're Brandon, that's actually fine, because that's one less dissolve you're going to have for this Nissa. 
And meanwhile, this Corsair and this Elvish Mystic are still chipping away at him. <laughs> it was Urborg on top. That's, Holy smokes. That's pretty good. You called it. You're like a seer. You're wow. Like well, I, seer. I didn't call that it was going to be that. I just called that that's what he needed, and he found it. So Paul's going to take a more proactive role here and play out Dragonlord Ojitai first. That stabilizes this board. It does leave the shields down, though, for Brandon Nelson to resolve, resolve something, something scary here. You could just play it. You just play Nissa here, and I mean, she's gonna get killed with Ojutai, but it prevents her from yeah. looking. It makes a four-four. It's an interesting two, decision. He, he also gets to, he gets to get in for four with it. Yeah, that's what. I mean. Yeah, so he's, yeah. Not gonna, he's probably not gonna block. Or actually, no, he doesn't. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Five. Oh yeah, he can yeah, he, he can, can he still can, attack. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. He makes huh. four with Nick though, so then he just adds one from like Mystic or Carry added. To keep a forest untapped. This hand, Brandon's hand is just all gas though right now. There's two Genesis Hiders, a Rattleclaw Mystic, a Nissa, and something else on the back. But I, I it's it looks like another Corsair for fix maybe. But it's all, it's all gravy at this point. He's adding four, five. Oh, looks like it might be Nissa. I mean, like it, it it is a little lame that he has, that Nissa. Oh no! He oh, oh, Genesis All right. five. I like this. Oh, four, four, five, six, seven. Interesting. He found a carry added. That's not what you want to be seeing. Oof. Well, he that hit he hit last game to basically seal it up. This time he hasn't. I feel like that's actually one short, isn't it five? Uh, let's see, he's made f one, two, so that's four, five, six, seven, yes. I'm that's counting seven. I'm counting seven mana as well. Yeah, three three of the lands get tapped to make four mana, then five, and then the... the Elvish Mystic and the carry out add two more. Yeah, what happened there? I don't know. Did he miscount? I, I count seven the I, same as I you do, too. Frank, so I, I'm not sure. So I feel like, it, like if you looked at another card, he would get this Corsair of Crufix, which is much better than Sylvan carry added here. And he would maybe see a land on top. And the Genesis side would be 5-5. Five five. Seems like it would be significant. Hmm. It's like, he's not... He's not um, required to to pay all five into the Genesis Cider. He could add seven mana and still play Genesis Cider for four, you know? That's just literally a mistake. So it's not a rule. I don't think it's a rules infraction of any sort, so... Yeah, I mean, he can just decide not to use that. Yeah, right. Like, that's just a floating mana. I think they might be discussing that now, actually. I'd be curious, because we counted it out at seven beforehand. The, the other question is... I mean, because that's already happened, right? So the, another question is, well, does he get the counter on it even if he didn't look at the five cards, right? Because Dennis is weird like that. It is weird, yeah. Are you supposed to, like, if he does it for five, he's supposed to reveal five and or, put or five look at the yeah, five. So they're all, put all counters, the abilities are connected. He looked at four from what I saw and put four counters on it, I which mean, I think is just him saying, well, you know, I, I just missed it and, yeah. and, and I, and I right. did it for four and floated a mana. And I mean, clearly that wasn't. What he would have done that's if he would have known. But yeah, I mean, but if you miscount, you miscount. Like that's yeah. it's not illegal to play Genesis Cider for four. That's not an illegal play. Right. And having one mana in your pool, like that could be you could have an Elvish Mystic in hand that you wanted to play. You know, Paolo doesn't know that. He he doesn't know that no. Brennan doesn't have so Brennan, let's say he had an Elvish Mystic, he could then change his mind and be like, oh, I'll just use the extra one for this because now I see Corsair. So there's no way to prove otherwise. So it, I'm pretty sure it just has to stay at four if that's the case. Yeah, this is that's definitely what they're talking about. I, we can't hear them, thankfully. Cause yeah, maybe we can go to the wide shot and animated. see what they're talking about. Looks like they're. Paulo looks like he's got his thinking face on again here, because yeah, we're back in action here, so it's going to stay as a four-four. It's slightly off camera, but I'm assuming it's still just a four-four. Yeah, that seemed unfortunate. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. I mean, if he does it for five. It, do, it gets to be one bigger, but it also opens the door for him to play like a Whisperwood Elemental. Oh, yeah. You know, he didn't see one in the four, but... Plus, you're not drawing the Corsair another. Perfects, you know, so... That's yeah, like, interesting. You'd have the Corsair, you might... Well, I don't think he played a land that turn either, so he might have hit a land, and then there might have been another threat underneath that, so it could have actually changed the entire course of the game. You know, Paolo's looking at three, I imagine. 
And Paul is attacked with his Dragon Lord and just shipped a turn back here. That's okay. So he would have had a, he would have had a Sylvan carry headed on top because that's where they always are. And Hero's downfall is going to kill Genesis. Old Hydra. Jenny. Yeah, four eight six seven five three zero nine four four down. And uh, thanks to the plentiful mana creatures of Brandon Nelson, this is strong. A lot of those life total is just not under that much duress here. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, Sun Carrier does not make a very good attacker. I have never lost a game to an opposing Sun Carrier. Unless they had Jeskai Ascendancy, made it real big, and then Twin Flamed it. Which is actually a real thing. Brennan has a lot of options. But, Paolo does have Sulmgar Scorn mana. Okay, another there Genesis again. Hydra. Alright. Yeah, it looks like the top card in, in Paolo's hand is Sulmgar Scorn, so he's definitely... He's like, now I'm going to do it for seven. Oh, wow! So he hit Whisperwood. He almost whiffed there. I think that yeah. was like six lands and yeah, a... Yeah, that was a close call. But when you go seven wood. deep, you're often going to hit. Oof. It was real close, though. So you're thinking he's going to counter the Hydra? I can't imagine you just leave a 7-7 seven seven on board, Yeah, right? no, it seems pretty relevant here. He's he's countering so quickly that he's just, like, knocking that, that Ojitai around. Yeah, but here we go. Brandon Nelson, though, still gets Whisperwood Elemental on the battlefield here. He's going to get it to manifest that stupid forest he probably doesn't want anyway. Yes. And where's all the yes, sweepers here perfect. for Paulo? Oh, with an Azenagos on top. The crux off the top for Paulo okay, Vinodomita Rosa. Good. That was Wait, huge. No, not really, though. Oh, how many creatures does he have? He's got one, two, three. He's got oh, yeah, no, four. it's actually not that bad. Wow. Man, Paulo wishes, wishes he would have used that. And then he's got a top deck Xenagos. Hero's so downfall on the... So what, Paolo taps out, then Brandon attacks with his four manifest creatures and the Xenagos, puts him to one? Yeah, this is a big deal. Like, that's not the greatest... This is going to be Dragonlord Silumgar. Yeah. Which is going to steal nope. okay, the Okay, so that's, that's, that's a but start. But he's not going to let him... That's a great start. Gets the Whisperwood off the board. I mean, and he can pressure Xenagos, too, so this is actually looking pretty good for Paolo. <laughs> Carry at it. Carry out at number four. Yeah. Hello, friend. Oh, man. I think the the one under the manifest token is... Well, they went to time. Time of the round has been called. Now, these guys are a couple minutes behind the uh, the rest of the tournament, but they will not have that much time. It does look like they should be able to finish here, though. I don't think that they're on turns yet. Was, uh, who's turning on? We're on Brandon's turn, correct? So Paolo's going to be turn one. So Paolo's going to get three attacks. Brandon's only going to get... Okay, that, yeah, okay, they're not in time. Yeah, I said that. They're, That's they're, right, they're, yeah, they're you did, we did over that, correct. Yeah, yeah. You're correct. So th they will be shortly behind, though. I mean, we're talking... No, minutes, You know, they'll yeah. have five minutes or less, yeah. So. No, it's not a, not a large amount of time. But they have been playing pretty briskly. You, you mentioned that yeah, at the beginning of the Yeah, they look like game. they don't want to yeah. draw. I don't, I, I don't think we draw is good for either of these guys right now. Right. All right, so Brandon just made infinite mana. Yeah, I counted <laughs> it up. It's infinite. It's, it's close, yeah. I think it's infinite minus one yeah. or plus. It's give or take. He can actually get in for a ton of damage here, right? I saw Nissa in uh, his hand, too. Yeah, he's definitely got some floating right now. I think he's going to play Nissa. But he doesn't but he have a forest up. Yeah. attack with Nissa? Hmm. Or with Nissa's forest? Nope, just another Corsair. Seder, and he just passes it back. And Paulo is going to attack with both because he has set up this Crux of Fate from the l going back to the last turn. So he gets to anticipate with the hit from Dragonlord Ojatai. Silumgar takes down Xenagos, and I have this a is going to be a gonna be blowout. Yeah, he's just going just gonna to crux the fate naming mm, non-dragons, probably. He's going to kill eight creatures with his yeah. crux and none of his own. And none of his own. It's going to be pretty solid. Yeah, how fun is this? Whee! Oh, and Brandon said, all right, writing's on the wall. And a quick handshake between oh, the wow, two that competitors. See, that was a great game. That was a, one of the back and forth games that we were talking about. Like, totally. From, at any point, game. I wasn't sure who was going to win that game, but at the end, Paolo just pulled ahead. Oh, we have a Huey.